Hi everyone, my name is Danielle Augustine. Thank you so much for being here today. We're gonna to begin in a seated position. If you'd like to have your hips a little bit elevated, you're welcome to use a couple of blocks. I know not everyone has these at home. So you're welcome to use a blanket as well. You can just fold it over a couple of times. Then relax your hands down to your lap. Allow your sit bones to sink down in towards the ground and reaching up through the crown of your head, maybe rolling the shoulders forward, up towards the ears, and allow them to melt down the back. We're gonna close our eyes and come into our breath. Begin by blowing all of the air out, getting nice and empty. Breathing in, filling up, taking your time. And breathing out, letting it go. Inhale. And exhale. Last time, breathing in. And let it all go. Returning to normal breath. And allow the body to settle in. Gently opening back up with the eyes, coming back to the room. We're gonna begin by raising our right fingertips up towards the sky, reaching tall, and then draping the arm right over the head. You can tilt the head to the side and just allow the weight of the arm to give you a nice stretch in the side of the neck. Relaxing in the left shoulder, you can even let your left hand go. Releasing the right hand back down to the lap. We'll come to the other side. Left fingertips reach tall. And over the head, tilting the head to the side. Feeling this nice gentle stretch, breathing into that space. And breathing out. Release the hand back down to the lap. And we're going to transition here into a neutral tabletop position. So if you're using blocks or a blanket, you can just place it off to the side. You can also use it underneath your knees if you have sensitive knees. Bringing the wrists just under the shoulders, knees just under the hips. We'll drop the belly, inhale, bring the gaze forward for cow pose. Exhale, pulling belly button to spine, rounding out the back for cat pose. Inhale, drop the belly. And exhale, round it out. Breathing into your cow pose. And breathing out. Coming back to your neutral back. Gonna tuck the toes, pressing the hips back and up for downward facing dog. So beginning by pedaling through the feet, you can alternate bending one knee at a time. And if you're not sure what your stance needs to be between your hands and your feet, you can always roll your shoulders over your wrists, coming into a plank position. Notice if you move to your hands or feet, keeping them right where they are and then press the hips back and up. This is where you wanna be. Reaching the hips high up towards the ceiling and settling in. You're gonna inhale the right foot back and up behind. Go ahead and open up in the hip here. You can bend at the knee. Maybe draw some circles with the knee. Maybe you wanna roll through the ankle, changing directions. Bringing the right foot straight back and up behind. Inhale to lift up a little higher. And exhale to bring it to the top of the mat. We're going to bring the right knee just to over the ankle. Dropping the back knee down, untucking the toes. Inhale, arms sweep up next to the ears. And staying here. Breathing in, lifting up with the chest. And breathing out. Last one. Inhale, keep the length in the spine. And exhale, releasing the hands down to frame the front foot. We're going to ground with our left hand inside of the right foot. Right fingertips reach up towards the sky for a gentle twist. You can relax that right shoulder away from the ear. Maybe draw back with the right shoulder blade. Reach a little taller. 
and release back down to the mat. Tucking the back toes behind, lift the back knee, step to plank position. We'll lower down with the knees, chest and chin. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll inhale the left foot back and up, open up in the hip. Find that bit of movement, waking up the hip flexor. Be sure to stay strong through both shoulders here. We'll bring the left foot back behind. Inhale, lift up a little higher. Exhale to bring it to the top of the mat. Knee over the ankle, we'll drop the back knee down, untuck the toes. Big inhale, arms sweep up. And staying here. You have a nice inner rotation with the shoulders here. So you can really bring your palms together to face one another. One more inhale. And exhale, releasing the back down. We'll ground with the right hand. Left fingertips reach tall. Feeling nice and open in the chest here. See if you can find some length in the back of your neck. Releasing the left hand back down. Tucking the back toes, lift the back knees, step to plank position. And lower down with the knees, chest and chin. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Bending the knees, bringing the gaze forward. We're gonna lightly step up to meet our hands at the top of our mat making your way to a forward fold. You can even separate the feet a little bit here, allow a soft bend in the knees, really release here from the spine. And grab opposite elbows for ragdoll. Maybe swaying from side to side. Switch the grip of your hands, bring opposite forearm in front. We'll release the fingertips down to the mat. Inhale for a half lift and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead, palms come to touch. And exhale, the palms come together at heart center, gently closing the eyes for just a moment and setting any intention you have for your practice today. Releasing the hands to the sides, gently opening up with the eyes. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, hinge forward. Half lift. Plant the hands, stepping back to plank position. We'll lower down through our first chaturanga, elbows at 90 degrees. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. We're gonna stay here for five, breathing in and breathing out, one. Two, still reaching the hips high up towards the ceiling. Three, breathing in, breathing out, four, last one, inhale. Exhale, bend the knees, bring the gaze forward, step or float to the top of the mat. Find your half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, arms reach tall, Urdhva Stasana. And exhale, the hands to the sides, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Inhale, arms reach up. And exhale, fold forward. Half lift. Plant the hands, step or jump back this time, moving through your chaturanga flow. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathing in. Breathing out. See if you can increase the space between your hips and your ribs. Reaching tall, find the length in the spine. Inhale, exhale, bend the knees, look forward, step or jump to the top, half lift, inhale, 
Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, arms reach tall. And the hands to the sides, to Dasana. We'll move one more time through. Inhale, arms up. And fold forward. Half lift. Plant the hands, step or jump back. Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Checking in, seeing if we can find that internal rotation once again with our shoulder blades. So a good way to do this is to check in with your armpits, see if you can bring them to face one another. And you might feel a shift happening in the shoulders here. Continuing to ground down with the hands, pressing the knuckles into the mat to lift a little higher. Breathing in and breathe out. Bend the knees, look forward, step or jump to the top. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms reach tall. And exhale, the hands to the sides, to Dasana. Wonderful. We're gonna come into our first balancing pose. We're gonna do a simple quad stretch here, starting to wake up the top of the leg. So we're gonna start by bending at the right knee. You can catch the outside of the right foot behind you. Here I'd like you to bring your knees together to touch. Maybe pull the foot a little closer to the body. Go ahead and release the foot back down. We'll come to the other side. Bending at the left knee, catching the outside of the left foot behind. Knees come together to touch. And imagining a downward energy coming down through your left knee, tuning into the top of the thigh. And go ahead and release back down. We'll bring our feet back together to touch at the top of the mat. Inhale, arms reach up. And exhale, fold forward. Half lift. Plant the hands, step or jump back, moving through your flow. Meet in downward facing dog. Inhaling the right foot back and up. Exhale to bring it to the top of the mat. Open warrior two. Reverse warrior, right hand comes up and back. And extended side angle. You can bring your right elbow to the knee. Left fingertips reach forward. You still have that nice internal rotation happening. So rather than the arm coming up and over, we have our arm sweeping forward in front of us and coming right over the ear. If you gaze up at your hand, you should see the inside of your palm. One more big inhale, reaching through. And exhale. Inhale to press back up to standing. We're going to straighten through our right knee. Bring the right toes in and palms come together to touch overhead. We're gonna prepare for goddess pose, so you might wanna to heel toe your feet together a little more with your toes pointed out. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, bend the knees, sink the hips for goddess pose. I want you to check in with your tailbone here. See if you can direct it down towards the mat and then sink your hips a little further. Keeping the arms nice and active through the fingertips. Once more, breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, pressing back up to standing, palms touch. Open, warrior two. Reverse warrior, take it up and back. And circling the hands back down to the mat, stepping back, moving through your chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhaling the left foot back and up. Exhale to bring it to the top of the mat. Open up, warrior two. Checking the right knee is just over the ankle. Reverse warrior, take it up and back. And extended side angle. Right fingertips reach forward. Again, we're finding that nice space between the hips and the ribs here. See if you can move it up. And maybe opening up with the chest. Pulling back with the right ribs.
We'll inhale to come back up for warrior two. Straightening through the left knee, left toes turn in. This time we're gonna interlace our fingers at our low back. So we're gonna come into Padottanasana here. So lifting the chest, lift the gaze, and exhale, hinging forward. Keeping the fingers bound here, you can allow the weight of the arms to fall over the head. And then checking in if your hips are behind your heels. See if you can bring the weight forward into the balls of your feet. You'll feel your torso coming forward. Your head might come a little closer to the ground. Breathing into the backs of the legs and breathing out using the strength of your legs hinging back up to standing and then opening towards the front coming back for your warrior two reverse warrior take it up and back exhale circling the hands back down to the mat stepping back and moving through your flow Inhaling the right foot back and up. Exhale to bring it to the top of the mat, warrior two. Grounding down with the back heel. We'll inhale to straighten through the front knee and then reaching forward as far as you can, find your length. Right hand comes down, left fingertips to the sky for Trikonasana triangle pose. So if you're using blocks at home, you can always use a block to the inside of your right foot, but you can also just use your leg here. One more breath, breathing in and breathe out. Inhale to come back up to standing. Reverse triangle, flow it up and back. With your exhale, warrior two. Rebending the right knee over the ankle. And we'll stay here. Checking in that the shoulders are in line with the hips. If you notice that you can move that knee forward quite a bit, then maybe heel toe the back foot just a couple of inches so you can feel that opening in the hips. Inhale and exhale. Inhale to straighten through the front leg, reverse triangle. Exhale, circling both hands back down to the mat. Spiral the back heel up, step to plank. Moving through your chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhaling the left foot back and up. Exhale to bring it to the top of the mat. Open, warrior two. We'll straighten through the front leg, reaching forward, finding your trikonasana triangle pose. And especially if you're not using blocks today, if your hand's on your leg, checking and making sure that you're, if you have a tendency to lock here, which some of us do, see if you can add a soft little micro bend. You'll feel those muscles activating around the knee. Inhale to press back up to standing. Reverse triangle, take it up and back. And exhale, warrior two. Staying here again, checking in with that stance. See if you can find the nice opening in the hips. You can also check in with that left knee, making sure not, not only is it over the ankle coming forward, but we wanna open it up. Sometimes we have a tendency to fall towards the center line. Inhale to straighten through the front leg, reverse triangle. And exhale, circling both hands back down to the mat, stepping back, moving through your flow. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Bending the knees, look forward. Step or float to the top of the mat. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms reach tall. And exhale, the hands to the sides, to Dasana. We're gonna come into our next balancing pose today. We're gonna to go into dancer pose. So we're gonna begin by bending through the right knee. And same thing as before, but we're gonna catch the inside 
of our right foot behind us. You can bring those knees back together to touch. Left fingertips extend towards the sky. We're gonna find that quad stretch first. Begin by kicking back into your hand. Once you've found it, continue to kick back and allow the chest to come forward. Reaching further as you kick back a little farther. Lifting up, reaching further. Gently with control, making your way back up. And we'll release the foot back down. Bending through the left knee, catch the inside of the left foot behind. Knees come together to touch. Right fingertips reach up to the sky. Find your quad stretch first, kicking back and reaching forward. Continue to check in with your standing foot here. See if you can ground down, pressing the mat away and lifting up a little higher. See if that gives you a little bit more freedom to expand in your upper body. With control, making your way back up and releasing the foot down, arms to the sides. We'll come back to the top of the mat. Feet come together. Inhale, arms reach up. And exhale, fold forward. Half lift. Plant the hands, step or jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Rolling your shoulders over your wrists, coming back into your plank position. Belly to spine, inhale. Exhale, lower down with the knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, baby cobra. I'd like you to pause here. So we'll ground the tops of the feet down into the mat, lifting up with the chest, and keeping a nice long neck here in line with the spine. If you want to take it a little further, you can lift your hands a few inches off from the mat. And releasing the body back down. You can rest one cheek to the side and relax the arms at the sides of the body. Interlacing the fingers at the low back, zipping the legs up together. We're setting up for Shalabhasana. You can bring the forehead back to the mat. Inhale, reaching back with the hands, lifting up with the thighs. So this feels a little bit like our baby cobra keeping the neck nice and long, reaching through the top of the head and also reaching back with the toes. See if you can reach back a little further with the hands, finding your steadiness with the breath and releasing back down, rest opposite cheek down to the mat. If you'd like, you can shake out your hips a little bit here, releasing the low back. I'm gonna flip over onto our backs to set up for bridge pose. So knees will be bent, soles of the feet on the mat, and arms gonna be extended long at the sides of the body. See if you can just tickle the backs of the heels with your fingertips. Grounding down with the feet, begin to peel the tailbone up off from the mat, lifting the hips up to the sky. If you'd like, you've got the option to interlace the fingers underneath you extending the arms long and rolling onto the shoulders. Breathing in through the back of the neck and breathing out. Once more, inhale and exhale, releasing your bind and rolling the spine back down onto the mat. We're gonna set up for wheel pose here. If you'd rather not come into wheel pose, you can come back into bridge pose. So for wheel pose, bringing the hands to the outsides of the ears on your mat, checking in that the elbows are parallel to one another. Rounding down with the hands and the feet, lifting the chest and the hips off from the mat. See if you can straighten through your elbows here. It's gonna give you a nice little lift and then maybe try to reach your chest forward. Tucking the chin to the chest, rolling the spine back down onto the mat. 
and we're going to separate our feet about mat width distance apart. Allow the knees to fall together at center. Your arms can either be at your sides or you can bring one hand over the belly, one hand over the heart. Finding intention with your breath. Directing your breath into your lower back. We're going to bring our kneecaps into the palms of our hands. You can allow the feet to just dangle gently above the mat. See if you can allow your arms to be straight here to provide a little space. If you like, you can rock from side to side. You're welcome to stay here or move into happy baby. We're going to hug both knees in towards our chest. We're going to make our way to a seated position. If you'd like, you can rock forward and back to get there. We'll extend our legs long in front of us. We're going to bend the right knee in towards the chest. Allow it to fall open to the side. Grounding your sit bones into the mat, reaching the hands up overhead, lifting tall and folding forward over the left leg. You can reach for your shin, your ankle, maybe even the sole of your foot. And try to keep the foot nice and flexed here so we can keep it active. You can also release the muscles in the knee and see if you can really focus in on the calf muscle and in the hamstring. Gently lifting back up with the chest. We're going to bring our right knee back up to center, hopping the right foot over the left leg. We're going to ground the right hand into the mat behind us. Sort of like a little kickstand here. Reaching the left fingertips to the sky and twist. There's a little bit of movement that we can find in this posture. With each and every breath, I'd like you to find yourself lifting up, feeling nice and tall through the spine. With each exhale, see if you can really twist to get nice and empty. Inhale to come back to center. Exhale for a counter twist to the other side. Inhale back to center. And we'll extend the right leg long. Bend the left knee in towards the chest. Open it up to the side. And we'll reach tall with the hands up overhead and folding forward. Noticing where you're feeling this the most. A lot of us are of course going to feel this in the back of the leg, but sometimes we can really feel this in the low back as well, especially on the left side, opposite of whatever side we're stretching the leg on. Inhale to roll back up. We're going to bring the left knee back up, hop the left foot over, grounding the left hand behind, reaching tall with those right fingertips, and twist to the left. We're going to find that movement each time, breathing in, lifting tall, breathing out, twist a little further. Inhale, lift, and exhale, twist. A few more times. Inhale to come back to center and exhale for a counter twist to the other side. Inhale back to center. We're just going to go ahead and shake out the legs in front of us. And then bending with our knees, soles of the feet come back. You might want to scooch up a little bit on your mat. We're just going to walk ourselves right back down so that we're on our backs. I'm going to be guiding us through a shoulder stand. So the shoulders stand, we're going to lift our feet up over our head. We need to find some room here. Lift the feet up over the head. Hips lift off from the mat. I don't know, maybe you can use a wall here. Toes are pointed down or touching the ground above your head. You can bring your hands to your low back and press the hips so that they're over your shoulders. Maybe even rolling onto the sides of your shoulders. 
So once you're in alignment here, you can lift your feet up over your head as if you're stepping on the ceiling. If you feel those hips start to move back a little bit, just continue to press into the low back, maybe even moving your hands up your back slightly. Same as in our bridge pose, it can be a little bit difficult to breathe here with the chin so close to the chest. So I like to focus on us breathing in to the back of our necks. See if you can find some space here. And gently begin to lower the legs back down. We'll stay in plow pose for just a couple of breaths. If you like, you can also release at the knees next to the ears and maybe extend your arms along behind you. And we'll gently begin to roll the spine back down onto the mat. And with control, we're gonna set up for fish pose. So you can bring your arms in close at the sides of the body, grounding down with the elbows, lifting up with the chest and tapping the top of the head down onto the mat. Pointing through the toes, breathing into the entire front side of the body. Tucking the chin to the chest, and rolling the spine back down onto the mat. You can release the legs long, relaxing the arms to the sides. We'll take a nice deep breath together, breathing in and breathing out, releasing entirely into your Shavasana. Welcome to stay in Shavasana for as long as you would like. Otherwise, thank you so much for practicing with me today. Namaste.